Hey, what's going on? This is DJ Scribble, and you're watching My Vegas Scene. Welcome, welcome. We're sitting here with uh, DJ Scribble and DJ Mikey Swift. I'm Scribble. <laughs> He's the better looking one. <laughs> so I just got, you know, just want to touch base with you guys while you're out here in Vegas. It's always fun coming out to Vegas. I mean, you know, I remember coming out here before. I mean, I might have been the first, like, celebrity DJ to really kind of come out and play Vegas when Steve D brought me back out here in 96 for Ra. You know, and I was coming out here every Labor Day, Memorial Day, July 4th, Thanksgiving Eve, you know, um... You know, New Year's Eve and stuff, and, and then paved the way for all these clubs that were starting to open, and then just kept doing it, doing it, doing it. And from doing Foundation Room, from meeting Mike Fuller, and then doing the Palms Grand opening of, of Rain, you know, I mean, I've right. done pretty much every club and event out here in Vegas for many, many years. That's so awesome. to still be coming out here and keep coming, it's, re it's really fortunate for me. And then almost 30 years later, you're up for uh, America's Best DJ. Yep, we're up for America's Best DJ again. Last year we came in number third. I mean, number third. Number third, we came in third in the country. This year, hopefully, we can take it to number one. And you can vote by going to www.djtimes.com uh, forward slash best DJ. And if you don't want to vote for me, there's a hundred other DJs on there that you can vote for. Seriously, support the yeah. DJs and vote for your favorite Vote for one. somebody. That's right. But, all right. So you're probably best known for uh, being the king of spring break. Yeah. MTV Spring Break. Tell us about that. I mean, how'd you get started with that? Um, well, I started, my first year at MTV was 98, and that was my first Spring Break with them down in Jamaica with Brandy, um, NSYNC, and Jerry Springer in the grill, Jamaica. And uh, I, they brought me down there. It was right after I left Hot 97, and, and this was a time when obviously MTV was still playing music. There were no <laughs> rules. It was go in there, box the crate of records, play what I wanted, did the dance party, and then they kept me on, and they asked me to come back and do the Jersey Shore and do this exercise show called The Daily Burn and I thought that was going to be like the end of my career. <laughs> like I'm like, I'm backup music for like this, these two dudes, you know, doing all this exercise at like 8 o'clock in the morning on MTV. But we did it and um, that's what led to get me into MTV Jams with Tyrese Gibson and then doing MTV Jams and then doing Cisco Shake. I mean, it, it got to the point where we were on MTV so much it was like annoying. Right. <laughs> you know, it was like, we need music, get scribbled. We need music, we need DJ, get scribbled. So, you know, and what was great about MTV is I was the first and only DJ really to ever play on the station, on the right. channel. And that, you know, something that's, you know, the best, that's what brought me to the world. And you think that's, that's kind of changed the way DJs are, I mean, you mentioned celebrity DJs before, and you've got other DJs coming up and making names. I mean, themselves. listen, I, you know, I've been doing this, like I said, since 1980. I've been playing with rock groups from when I was in the Young Black Teenagers, going on tour with Public Enemy and going on stage with Primus and battling Les Claypool on the bass and I was, and Charlie from Anthrax on the drums, you know. So I've been doing this whole rock, rap, you know, mix for, you know, pretty much while these kids were still in diapers. Right. You know, but... <laughs> I really do feel like it's a, you know, it's a wonderful thing that I have kids come up to me and be like, oh, you paved the way for me, or I became the DJ because of you, and I, I definitely feel that I'm a little bit responsible for the AMs and the vices, and, and you know, to, to pave that way of, of, you know, I was that guy, you know, first, and right. that makes me feel really good. I, awesome. I remember, you know, it, it, Scribble's been a big influence in, in my career. Um, I remember, you know, all the spring break shows. I'd sit at home and watch these shows, and this is back when I was still just like a wedding DJ doing stuff like that, and I was just tipping into the club type thing. It was like, uh, I want to say it was like 97, 98, 99 time, and I, I remember watching you like the grind out there on the beach, and I'm thinking, like, wow, this has got to be the life. You're out well, there just yeah. playing for all these cool people. Yeah, and, yeah, I, and I really yeah. realized, like, I brought Middle America a face to what a DJ was. And yeah. we weren't just somebody, guys up there just playing records that we right. did what we did and put on a show, whether you were a house DJ, hip-hop DJ, now open format, and obviously this is before Serato and Tractor and Ableton and laptops and stuff like that. You know, so I came from a whole different school, but still progressed in the technology and, and stayed right with it and didn't fall by the wayside, thank God. I mean, we still do 200 plus shows a year, right. you know, all over the world. So I've been in 44 countries and all 50 states. That's awesome. So a little bit about, about Las Vegas. And Mike, you can, you can shed some light on this as well. Uh, you're at Rehab. Which is probably one of the biggest pool parties in the in the country. It's it's the biggest pool party in the world right now. Yeah, what's that like? Uh, it's a <laughs> about five p.m. It's a mess, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 a dope show. You know, it's it's everything you ever want to do 
<laughs> you could do there. You know, right. the place is just, it's unreal. You go out there and who, you know, who thought to go party in the daytime in the pool? I mean, this is yeah. genius. You know? I mean, rehab pretty much is the ones that paid the way out here for the pool parties. Oh, yeah. For, for it's, it's, it's the granddaddy of the pool yeah. parties. I mean, I, I love it. It's it's probably my best gig out here. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And it's every I'm week. I'm jealous it's, of that one. <laughs> <laughs> We got to talk to the guys and get it It's the deal. I, so I'm surprised that you haven't played that. I've never done rehab. Never done it yet. Blows my mind that you haven't played that yet. <laughs> never so. done it yet. No, I'm trying to make that happen. You heard it here first. So tell me, uh, how does how does Las Vegas as as a vacation spot? You know, everybody thinks you can't Vegas go on vacation is, here. You, you know, that for, <laughs> see, I'm not a civilian. See, if I was a civilian, that's a different story. Right. Like I've never come to Las Vegas just as a civilian. Just like, hey, just let's go, vacation. you know, go in the you casino and hang out. And play. I've never come out here just to come out here and hang out. Well, ever. You're absolutely right. So with that said, I mean, how does that compare to some of the other? You know, spring break. Uh, no, listen, Vegas is, all, is always in the top, you know what I mean? Because, especially on the big weekends with the Memorial Day, I remember doing Raw, bro, and just seeing at 10 o'clock at night a line outside of the Luxor Hotel wrapping down around street. down the street oh, to I get into Raw. Nice. And by 11.30, if you weren't in that club, never you ain't getting in. in. And I would, play from, I would play from 10 o'clock at night, and I would play till 8 in the morning in Raw. Right. And that, was, that will always be my all-time favorite heyday and then I would go over to like Dre's or Opa back then and well, you know yeah, and, Blues, and then on Monday nights I would do foundation with Mike Fuller yeah that was the, that was actually one of the first times I ever saw you was um, at Raw and I want to say it was 99 I was out there for my birthday and I just so happened on my birthday weekend you were there playing on a Friday night and that was back when you know Finesse and War and Peace and all these guys were there doing it big and I was just like wow this is gonna be my first time and that had, that had been after I'd been watching on MTV and I remember that show, I remember going in, and it was, it was very, you know, very profound for me uh, because I got to see how to control the crowd using hip-hop and house, and even then you were kind of dipping into some, some old school, a little bit of 80s. Yeah, and oh yeah, like that's what I'm saying, like, well, I was doing that, you know, like guys like me, Riz, I mean, you know, like, we were doing that a long time ago. It yeah. just, you know, it was like, it finally broke through, and now that's, you know, it's almost like, you know, the open format is, you know, the, just the way it is, you know what I mean? That's what the, the new genre of the DJ is right now. Yeah, I agree. It's not mashups anymore. It's just open format. Play whatever the crowd is feeling. Whatever's going to make the girl shake their ass, keep people on the dance floor, keep bottles coming to the table, especially here in Vegas. As long as you got the bottles coming to the tables, you're keeping people on the dance floor, you're keeping people drinking, that means you're doing a good job. Doing a good job. That's right. Vegas is a whole different animal than just playing in a regular club. What's your favorite part about Vegas in general? Not even, not even necessarily the performing. I have a lot of favorite parts. <laughs> <laughs> now, I need mean, listen. I mean, obviously the women out here are absolutely gorgeous. I mean, just everything. It's like when you when you're doing that pool last year when I was doing the Ditch Friday pool party at the Palms, and you're just looking out there and you're looking at 3,500 kids in the pool just having a great time and they're dancing to your music. I mean, that's what it's about. Right? Makes right. it worth it. It makes it all worth it. And I was coming out here every Friday right. from New York. Just hopping on a plane. <laughs> hopping on a plane. Air miles in hand. How about uh, least favorite part? About Vegas yeah. is when the sun comes up and you're leaving Dre's or back in, <laughs> or Empire Ballroom and that was open or, and you walk out and you go and you realize you did not bring your sunglasses <laughs> and you have to get into a cab and it's 120 degrees and go back to your hotel. That is the worst part of I'd have to agree on that. Hang <laughs> <Day> your <and> night. <laughs> So do you get to go out and enjoy the nightlife when you're out here? Or is oh, it yeah. No, I'm, you know, when I'm out here, I mean, there's been times we've been out here like two weeks straight and then get on a plane like this twitching going <laughs> home. I remember, being, I remember being in Oprah one night. It was like 5.30 in the morning when it was still open. And I just, we were here 13 straight days and we were still drinking. And then I drank like these Jaeger bombs. And I was just like, I just look at why are we, like, we <laughs> trying to go home? <laughs> this place could hurt you, man. Big That's time. true. It's That's very true. Yeah. Please go vote www.djtimes.com forward slash best DJ and please vote for Scribble. You also can follow me on Twitter at DJ Scribble and myspace.com forward slash DJ Scribble NY. And on Facebook, it's DJ, DJ Dash Scribble because there's a lot of kids out there that think they're me and take my name and I can't get my real name. <laughs> Your ultimate source for Las Vegas nightlife and news. For more information, visit myvegascene.com. I met a boy, his name was Shane, he was so fine.